The main theme of my channel, since I brought it back six months ago and soft rebooted it about a week ago, is unity, unifying people, bringing folks together from different lives, different backgrounds, different philosophies. For too long now in my country, we've had the narrative controlled by the extremes of the right and the extremes of the left. And with each election cycle, our country becomes even more divided. Blame it on politics today. Blame it on the two parties. Blame it on the president. Blame it on all the previous Congresses, including the current Congress. Blame it on the mainstream media. There's a lot of blame to go around for why things are the way they are in the United States. Social media also has this part to play because a lot of people that go back and forth, tweeting each other, hashtagging each other, a lot of people don't treat each other like people anymore. A lot of it's about keyboard worrying, you know, burning each other, zinging each other, you know, trying to dogpile on one another. And unfortunately, what's happened is you get action and reaction from both sides. And one thing that I think that this country needs right now, more than anything, is to get past the divisiveness, to start moving back to the center, to being moderate like me. I don't expect everybody to be a moderate because we are a country where all ideas are welcome. Well, most ideas, but philosophically, like uh, conservatism, liberalism, libertarianism, moderates, you get the idea. But unfortunately, as I pointed out, it seems like we're getting more divided with each passing year and each passing election cycle. President Trump is very divisive. There are a lot of members of Congress on both sides, Republican and Democrat, very divisive. And a lot of the Democratic presidential candidates, in one way or the other, divisive. Now, there's one candidate that I believe is not divisive. She has the track record to prove it, and that's something that's very important, going by a candidate's track record, because you can talk a good game as a elected candidate for a local government, for state government, for federal government, for Congress, for president. But if you don't have that track record to back you up, then it, it's just words, it's meaningless, because you have nothing to go by when it comes to this candidate. Now, case in point, over a decade ago, I became very actively involved in politics because of Ron Paul, who I first saw on uh, Jon Stewart's Daily Show back in summer 2007. And I'm still uh, a strong believer in our Constitution, our Bill of Rights, the amendments, the founding documents of our republic. And at the time, I felt like there was no candidate out there that actually felt the same way I did, that believe that we should actually follow these documents. They're the founding documents of our country, the laws of the land, and I felt like there was too many elected officials, even presidents, that weren't doing so. And Ron Paul was out there in 2007 speaking out about how we need to get back to following the Constitution, respecting the Bill of Rights, as well as the amendments that have been passed since the Bill of Rights, and that resonated with me. And at the time, I was already libertarian-leaning, so from 2007, 2008, I was a Ron Paul supporter. And whenever he ran for president again in 2012, I supported him once more. In fact, there were plenty of videos on this channel. And in fact, I did some syndicated uh, radio talk shows over the years. I had a few radio talk shows that you know, promoted Ron Paul back in the day. After 2012, I became very burned out with politics. And for the record, I didn't agree with Ron Paul and everything. But the reality is you're never going to agree with anybody on everything. But in 2008 and 2012, I believed he was the best candidate. Unfortunately, the establishment thought otherwise, and he didn't have a chance in hindsight. But in my opinion, this is one thing that has never changed over the past decade plus of me being involved in politics here and there. It's not enough to support a winner because winners don't really lead us to anything better except for more divisiveness. And that's the problem. People are quick to jump on the bandwagon because this person or that person is doing well in the polls or this person has name recognition or this person is a billionaire or a reality star. What we need to do is learn from our past mistakes 
and pick the right candidate for the job, the candidate that is going to unify the country. And in my opinion, there is one candidate that has the potential to do so, and that is Tulsi Gabbard. And I'm not going to make tons of videos on my channel like I did with the Ron Paul age from 2008 to 2012. That's not going to be what the channel's about. But I wanted to make a video showing my open support in Tulsi Gabbard for president and for the Democratic nominee. Now, I've never been a Democrat. I've, I probably have voted for a few Democrats because I believe in voting for a person not a party. And there's been several occasions in elections where I felt like the best candidate was a Democrat or the best candidate was a Republican or a Libertarian or an Independent. Doesn't mean they win. It's just I believe in them. And I'm going to be real here for a moment. Obviously, she's not doing so well in the polls compared to some of the others like Biden, Elizabeth Warren, as well as Kamala Harris, um, the others as well. I'm not going to go through the entire list because there's a lot of Democrats running for the nomination. But of all the candidates, she is my choice. She is the one that I think has a legitimate chance of actually healing the divide that's going on in our nation. She is the one I think that could unify enough people behind her, conservatives, liberals, moderates, libertarians to some degree. Once again, like I said, you're not going to agree 100% with her. But you're not going to agree 100% with a lot of candidates out there. And I'm not trying to brainwash you or program you to believe anything. Go and look her up yourself. You know, tell C2020.com. If by the time you look her up, if you watch her videos and you don't agree with enough of her platform that you can't support her, that's fine. You do you. I'm just saying that I'm personally going to support Tulsi come hell or high water. There's a very real chance she will not get the nominee, just like... Ron Paul didn't get the nomination in 2008 or 2012 for the Republican Party. But that didn't matter to me. I wanted him to win because I believed he was the best choice, and that, once again, is my belief. Just like I believe Tulsi is the best choice. What matters is what you believe in. What matters is you taking the time to go and look at all the candidates, to hell with the, the polls, and see where they stand on the issues. Look at their backtrack record. Now, is her record perfect? No. Nobody's perfect. I mean, just the other day, Biden said something else stupid. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. Let's not talk about that. All right, so let's talk a little bit about Tulsi. That's what I want the focus to be here. Now, if you go by Tulsi's YouTube channel, Tulsi is the first female combat veteran to ever run for president and was the first female combat veteran to ever be elected to Congress, along with Tammy Duckworth. Gabbard has served for over six years in the Foreign Affairs Committee and the Armed Services Committee, where she's been intimately involved with sensitive national security issues. A war veteran for two tours of duty in the Middle East and presently a major in the United States Army National Guard, Gabbard is an outspoken critic of regime change wars and the new Cold War. So this is her YouTube channel. By the way, I'll put all this below in the description section for you to check out yourself. And I said once again, you don't have to support her blindly. I don't expect you to support anybody blindly. I don't expect you to agree with me on any of my takes. And as always, you're always welcome to disagree with me in the uh, comment section as long as you're civil and respectful about it. That's what really matters. So this is the basics about what Tulsi is about. I'm not going to go over each one. Well, we're not, we're not going to go into detail because I don't want this to be a long video. But these are, I guess you would say, the pillars of her campaign. A foreign policy of prosperity through peace, enact criminal justice reform, end the failed drug war, I'm absolutely on board for that, equality for our, all, yes, indeed, health care for all, hold Wall Street accountable, and that's one issue I have with uh, the corporatization of America, whereas you have the fat cats on Wall Street, you have the executives, the suits, the corporations, they get through tax loops where a lot of them should be paying billions of dollars each year in taxes, or maybe millions I mean, we want them to exist. We want them to continue you know, having employees and producing products. But at the same time, they need to do their part as well. And all too often, you find the corporations running things or at the very least getting away with things that most people and most other smaller businesses wouldn't. And so, yeah, that's definitely something I support is holding Wall Street accountable, holding corporations accountable, honoring and empowering our veterans invest in public education for our teachers. That's something that's a major issue. All these are major issues, by the way. 
but we definitely need to do our part to improve public education for the youth of America so that they have a better chance from all backgrounds, Biden, all poor kids, including, yes, white kids are poor too, but all kids should have the best education available to them in the United States, as well as the best teachers and, you know, the best tools and the best pay for our teachers. People before profits and politics, I agree entirely. Protect our civil liberties, definitely. Protect our planet with clean energy and create jobs. Protect in democracy, racial justice, reform our broken immigration system, report on chemical attacks in Syria, Second Amendment rights and gun safety, stand up for women's rights, and strengthen Social Security. So, this past week, there's been a few videos on my channel regarding the issue of gun rights and you know, red flag laws, as well as, you know, the, the sad, tragic events that happened last week in El Paso, as well as Dayton. And some of you probably disagree with me how I, where I stand on that issue. Even though I am pro-Second Amendment, I am a gun owner, at the same time, as I've been saying the past week, I do believe that there needs to be some improvements made to the background check system. And unlike some people out there, I think that if you look at the pattern of the uh, previous shooters, monsters, racists, terrorists, whatever you want to call them, not just, not just these past two, but you know, numerous over the past several years, even all the way back to, say, the 90s with uh, Columbine, you could say that most of the shooters suffered from a degree of mental issues. That doesn't mean that we blame all people with mental problems because we all have issues here or there. Nobody's perfect. But at the same time, there are definitely some people that have serious enough psychological, mental issues that probably shouldn't own a firearm, but that's a side issue. Now, when it comes to Tulsi Gabbard, like I said, don't take my word for it. Now, the first time I heard about Tulsi Gabbard was actually on uh, Joe Rogan's podcast. I love Joe Rogan, by the way. And once again, I don't always agree with Joe Rogan. And that's, that's the issue is that because you disagree with somebody on one thing, it means they're a monster or they're a, a bad person from Europe or they're a commie or whatever. We all have our different views and opinions and we're never going to agree 100% of each other. That's the spirit of our country, you know, First Amendment. Everyone's right to their own opinions, but the point is you got to form your own opinions and not be, you know, repeating what other people tell you. I actually went out and I researched Tulsi like I said, and I looked at her back record. She served our country. She still serves our country. It's both in a Congress and, like, she, like it says, as a major in the National Guard. So how many of the other candidates running for president right now on the Democrat side have served our country? More importantly, did our president, Tr Donald Trump, serve our country? Uh, I think he got some deferments. Isn't that right? I think so. And he's supposed to be a hardcore military man having uh, authoritarian-type military parades on July 4th. Okay, and that guy never once served a day in the military. I think it was a cadet or something back in military school. But here's somebody that has actually served our country, somebody that has sworn to uphold and defend the Constitution of the United States. I respect Tulsi Gabbard uh, 3,000 times more than Donald Trump for president. Now, most of the other Democratic candidates I feel the same way about. So, like I said, I'm not a fan of most Democrats or most Republicans. However, there are some good Democrats and there are some good Republicans. And the major issue that I've been talking about for quite a while now is the fact that we have become very extremely divided in this country. And if we have any hope of healing that divide, of trying to get back to the middle, to common ground to the table in order for all sides to sit down and actually have a dialogue instead of demonizing or keyboard worrying or hashtagging each other and actually come up with solutions to the problems that we face as a nation going forward. We need a president that's going to unify this country, not divide it any further. And in my humble opinion, that potential presidential candidate is Tulsi Gabbard. And I hope that you will sincerely consider looking at her YouTube channel, watching her videos, her speeches, go to her you know, website, look at where she stands on the issues, and decide for yourself when it comes to who you should support for president in 2020.